somebody give Jesus Christ a big enough praise? Can I hear the shout of victory right here tonight? Come on, somebody. Open your mouth and give him the glory. He's worthy to the glory. Lift him higher above your situation. Lift him higher above your sickness and disease. Jehovah is your name. Yerebosata. Everyone worship the living God. He is worthy, worthy, worthy to be glorified. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the situation. Your revelation is bigger than your situation. You have stress. What is that? Can you believe the pilot that you don't know and question the God that you know? Somebody come on. Open in heaven. The devil 
devil is a liar. When they close the doors down here, he opened the door up there. He said, I see the door. Bible says, I heard the voice. Secondly, I saw the door. You cannot see before you hear. Because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Somebody say, I hear the Lord. Somebody say, speak Lord, speak. and say go and have a look he said I am so I hear the sound of an abundance of rain but I see a cloud as small as the hand of man two things are happening the sound is abundant but the sign is undermined now which means what I see it doesn't correspond with what I hear which means I see the small cloud but I hear the big rain which means my faith is not in the sign it's in the sound I, I, somebody shout I hear the sound can I hear people who say I hear the sound it's about to rain it's about to rain in your He used Anna to bring birth to Samuel, but he used Mary to bring birth to Jesus. Sarah was not fruitful. She was a parent. Out of parentness, God produced greatness. Because God is so powerful. That is why we speak about the supernatural encounter. Which means it must be declared impossible naturally. So that the supernatural... Am I preaching to somebody here? Supernatural is about to take over. Do you believe God for the supernatural? The Bible says now to him who is able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, immeasurably, and above all that we can ask. Give your neighbor high five and say, Get ready for the supernatural. Listen, when God something supernatural it's when a virginity gives birth to divinity without humanity joseph was also confused because mary is pregnant without his contribution the supernatural bypass the process the supernatural is when god comes after 38 years of sickness in the pool of Bethsaida and people were saying you are dead luck and God says I waited for everything to fail so that when everything is no longer working I may show up and Jesus was 33 years old and the sickness of this man was 38 years which means when Jesus appeared he looked like smaller than the sickness but the man had to have faith not in the son of man but the son of God because when you look at Jesus from the Judah side, you will see just the son of Mary. But when you look at the spirit, you see the son of God. And he said to this man, do you want to be well? Shake your name and say, do you want to be well? Look at another one and say, do you want to be well tonight? And the man says, I can I cannot hold to because your mindset is used that for anything to happen in your life, there must be somebody. But sometimes you must realize that when God wants to do it his way, he will allow men to fail you. He will allow men to disappoint you. So that when it is done, you will say, Amazing Christ! without water they went to the prophet and the prophet said you will never see the cloud you will never see the rain but take the way 
influence because this place shall be filled with water. God can bring water without the rain. You don't hear what I'm preaching. God said, let there be light. And later he created the sun. Which means God is not depending on the sun because he already had the sun. Which means God had S-O-N before S-U-N. Now which means God can light without the natural sun. That is why when he sent them to Canaan, he said, I'm taking you to the place of honey and milk. He doesn't say, I'm taking you via the cow and the cow will give you milk. He doesn't say, I'm taking you to the beast and they will give you honey. He said, I can bypass the beast. I I want people who are very stubborn say, do it your way. Come on, somebody say, like you believe it, and say, do it your way. God is not going to consult people. God is not going to arrange a meeting. He's going to elevate you without consultation. What's our pass? The next verse, chapter I'm rooting, is chapter 5 of Revelation. John was in Patmos. Listen, the book of Revelation in the whole Bible is the only book that was written by men without physical eyes. This man was in Patmos. They took off his physical eyes that they are activating his spiritual eyes. Because revelation doesn't need your sight. Only after this I looked and I saw. How can you see without eyes? We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And what is faith? Faith is a substance. And faith is an evidence. And faith is a title deed. And Hebrews 11, 3 say, by faith we understand that what is visible was made out of what is invisible, which means God can do something out of nothing. The word creator means God can do something out of nothing. In the beginning, the earth was without form. And God never came with the thunder, thunder, and the TLB. He said, let the be light. And there was light, which means when God speaks, God creates. Am I preaching to the right people? Shalom, 
The word break through is two words. Before you go through, you must break some stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not dying, I'm breaking through. Yeah. Nobody told me that the road will be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far. from the book of John. The book of John doesn't start with the son of man. It starts with the word. He says in the beginning there was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Murudim Kwanda says, I don't understand. How can you say the word was with and the word is? How can I be with me? I'm a... The word was with God. And the word was God. And it continues saying, the word became flesh. The word is not flesh. The word became flesh. What is called incarnation. Incarnation is when divinity is mixed with humanity. When the son of God becomes the son of man. God came to Mary to borrow the flesh and the blood. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that is why when you read Hebrews chapter 10, Jesus said in verse 5, the, the sacrifices of animals you don't no longer appreciate. Prepare a body for me so that I may die once and for all. Which means Jesus had to come to the womb before he goes to the tomb. Ah! Jesus arrived in for nine months was not his womb, it was Mary's womb. The tomb was not his tomb, it was Joseph's tomb. Now which means men borrowed God the tomb, women borrowed God the womb. Jesus was in light forever, but he had to hide in darkness, and that darkness was not caused by devil, was caused by the womb of Mary. Now, which means God had to come and join us in our darkness, so that he can understand what we are going through. And that is why the Bible says, since he himself has been through same sufferings, he understands what it's like when we suffer. And that is why the Bible says, we were, he was wounded for our transgression. Now, which means we have to understand that we don't just walk with the God who is just holy we walk with the god who knows how to be wounded now which means if you come with wounds you don't surprise him I... the book of hebrew says because of the joy that was set before him, he enjoyed the cross. Which means for you to enjoy, you must know what you are going to enjoy. If you don't understand what comes after the cross, you will get angry on the cross. But if you understand that crucifixion, it's few days from resurrection. You will never give up in your day of crucifixion because you cannot resurrect what was never crucified. Now, which means crucifixion is an opportunity for your resurrection, and that is why Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And when Jesus came to Bethania in John chapter 11, and they said, Lord, if you were here, my brother will still be alive, and Jesus reintroduced himself because if Jesus healed Lazarus, he will never have the opportunity to introduce himself as a resurrector and when he is dead he said I am the resurrection and the life and whosoever believes in me even if he can die he will live again I'm here to say that situation is gonna give you another side of God I... look at your neighbor and say don't 
get bitter, you are about to know God better. I ask the man and say, don't get bitter. You are about to know God better. You need to understand one thing. In the fivefold ministry, there is apostle, prophet, and pastors and everything, but there is no worshiper. It is strategically and divinely orchestrated that God will exclude worship in ministry because worship is not just only for earthly purpose. Worship is the only ministry that will survive death because after death we are still worshippers. And which means worshippers are eternal. That is why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in the book of John chapter 4, he said the time is coming and that time has cometh when the true worshippers will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. And I won't. I was growing thinking that a true worshiper is somebody without faults, it's somebody without mistakes. And later I grew up and understand that for you to be a true worshiper, you must be true yourself to yourself, even if you have messed up. Now, which means when you come to God, you don't come pretending, you come repenting. You is targeting Moses. God will never show you the weakness of Israel before he exposes your stammering. You don't hear me. When God appeared to Moses, Moses said, I cannot speak. When God appeared to Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I'm still a child. When God appeared to Isaiah, he said, I'm the man of unclean lips. When God appeared to Gideon, Gideon said, I'm from the weakest land of Manas, which means the glory doesn't target the nation, it targets the individual. Which means if you have experienced the real glory, you must see your own thoughts. You may look at others, you look inside, you start to introspect. Because God is not calling you to change the world, He's calling you to change. Somebody shout, Lord, change me. Ah, we have been praying for many years, Lord, change me. Let us change our prayers and say, Lord, change me. My colleague, Info Seven. I say, My colleague, when Jesus was raising the daughter of Jairus. He was not with everyone. He was with three disciples. When he went to get this man, he was with three disciples. When he went to the Mount of Three Transfiguration, he was with three disciples. Which means only three saw what the nine never saw. And when he was on the cross, he was left with only John. Now, which means every station of your life you must lose. The covenant of Jacob is not a permanent covenant. It's a covenant that exposes the hearts of your brothers. And the Bible says they took the covenant. They thought the anointing is in the covenant. And it's not about the man. It's not about the covenant. It's about the anointing. God will give you anointing in your spirit so that even if they can steal things from you outside, they cannot affect your spirit. Yeah, yeah. And you must remember that Joseph, before he entered the pit, he lost the garment. Before he left the palace, he lost another garment in the hands of the wife of Potiphar. Uh, but the last garment he lost it was the garment of Christ. And he entered the garment of the palace. Now, which means you cannot enter the palace with the garment of the priest. You need to know what to disconnect from if you want to connect with the new dimension. There are certain things that were good for walking but dangerous for climbing. You must remember that if Abraham and Isaac were walking with the servants, but when Abraham saw the mountain, he said to the servants, You remain here, me and the son, we are climbing the mountain. Because you must remember when you see the mountain, of God, you have come to the mountain of multiplication, which means whatever you try with, I will multiply, which means God will have to bring you to the place of separation.
operation and I saw after the journey in the book of Joshua chapter 5 they came to the place called Gilda the place Gilda is a place of circumcision and the Bible says all the generation that came out of Egypt the circumcised they have died and this generation they love God but they don't know pain That is not to go back the same year. Let us forgive Thomas for a moment. As much as he doubted, but he just wanted to verify that the man I bow to is the man who hang for me on the cross. Before I listen to your preaching, can you show me your wounds? Shake your name and say I was wounded for this. Come on, shake your name and say I cannot give up now. I was rejected for this. I was insulted for this. That is why when you go to take take it naked, you will never just jump the road and go to collect here. You cannot collect before you order, and you cannot order and not pay. You have to order here, pay here. The last window is collect here, which means collection is the last. You must order. After order, you pay. After paying, then you collect. That is why the generation of today they want success. <laughs> Joseph, David came to Aruna. Aruna saw David from a distance. He said, Oh, King, let me give you this land for free. <laughs> and David says, No, I cannot offer sacrifice to the Lord my God that has cost me nothing. Let me teach you the history behind that. David, if he took that thing for free, he would never have a title, did he? But he had to buy it so that Solomon can come and build in the temple on that land. Then the second thing is when you buy them, it's not for you. You are buying them for the coming generation. You must understand that God is no longer treating you as an individual. He treats you as a nation. You remember when Rabbeka prayed that God will give him a child. And God says, I'm going to give you two nations. And the God says, Esau and Jacob left it in the womb. And all of a sudden, the promise became a problem. And she asked and said, if this thing is from God, why it is like this? And God says, it's no longer children. There are two nations that are fighting inside of you. I wish it is the devil is not attacking you. He's attacking the nations that you are carrying. And I'm preaching to somebody here. And it's not like your pattern. It's not a normal pattern. Because the devil is no longer seeing you as an individual. He's seeing you as an ambassador. Was busy inside his wife. 
But God behind the scene was busy building to David. No, no. David went in danger. He put his life on the line to save Jesus' book. Because God wanted to test his love for the thing. Some of you have failed testing in your local churches. Remember, you couldn't take care of the congregation of another man. But you want to be faithful in your own congregation. You need to learn how to be faithful when somebody has put you in danger for the sake of your father's house. So that when you enter your house with a request and you know that God has seen your heart behind the danger, you must know that you cannot kill Goliath in the public if you have ever killed a lion in the secret. How much is your power? It's not what you do when everyone is watching. It's what you do when no one is watching. That is why Psalm 91 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. That man shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. When the ark was built, that God said to Noah, you must not take any available tree. You must look for the reliable tree. And he got the Kufa Hudi. The Kufa Hudi is the tree that grows eight years going down. And when it comes up, it has eight years in the water. So that it can survive the water above, it must survive the water beneath. I wish this God will allow you to go through some stuff when no one is watching. So that when he introduces you, when they try to attack you today, they don't know that you have been given
never touch his soul. And that is why you are still growing without them. You are still glowing without them. Because you are wounded outside, but you are renewed inside. Because the Bible says when the outer man is destroyed, then the inner man is renewed. You must remember, go and read Colossians chapter 2 from verse 14. It says Jesus cancelled the letter that was accusing us by nailing it to the cross. And the 15th verse, he said he made a public spectacle and he showed off and he disarmed the broken principality. Which means when they were busy with the body of Jesus, Christ was busy building us. Because we are not the body of Jesus, we are the body of Christ. And which means Jesus is the son of man, Christ is the son of God. Now Christ means the anointed and his anointed. Now which means Mary was carried, Jesus was Mary was carried by Christ. Because Christ is part of Trinity. He was there all the time. And that is why every time you read the Bible, it speaks about God, it will say off. Oh, the power of God, the love of God. And when he comes to Christ, he said, I can do all things through Christ. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, it says, walk in the Spirit. And which means if you want what is of God, you get it through Christ, where in the Spirit. And that is why people of this world, when you say God, they love you. When you say Christ, they hate you. Because the devil wants them to like their destiny, but to despise the way. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can go to my Father except by me. And God says to Timothy, there is only one mediator between God and man. And that is the man Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, he who did not no sin. He was made to be sin. The Bible says through one man, sin entered the world. And through one man, righteousness entered the world. And the Bible says, test is anything that hang on the tree. And they took Jesus and hang him on the tree and cast before him. And they took the thorns. You must remember that before sin, the earth was without thorns. The thorns were the results of sin. And when they took the crown of thorns and put it on the head of Jesus, they were taking the thorns out of our life. Now, which means God has given us the crown of glory. Glory, and he has taken the crown of thorns, and by his stripes we were healed. We are born anew, we are born again. We are the children of God, and therefore, if any man be in Christ, this is a new creation. Behold, the old things has passed away, and everything has become new. And Nicodemus came to Jesus, and he started to praise him. And Jesus said, Don't praise me without embracing me. He said, Unless you are born again, you will never see the kingdom. And he went and said, Unless you are born of what I spirit. You will never enter the kingdom, which means there are two dimensions. There is a time to see it, but there is a time to enter it. Now, which means we are not just here to see the kingdom. We are here to...
Somebody say amen. Jeremiah 30 verse 17. I would love for you and I get again to house. They should go for I get about it. For I will restore health to you. Somebody shall restore it. And I will heal your wounds. I feel there's going to be healing taking place right now. Somebody say, Lord, heal my wounds. There are wounds that you don't even know. But get the reason. For I will restore health to you too. And I will heal your wounds, say the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast. Net for the idea. I was about to ring a man off. Not because you have prayed, but because they have called you. Because of that thing, I'm not gonna address you, I'm gonna address what they have. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, protect your neighbor. Because they have called you stupid, because they set you up from the poor family, because they set you up out to nothing. I'm gonna restore you, I'm gonna heal you. Ah, because they have called you an outcast. I can go fill up a city culture. Restoration. The Bible says in Jewel, I will restore what the locust yeah. has eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth Shaka, it's amazing that this is for God speaks about what the locust has eaten, but he doesn't address the locust. Why? Because I thought he would say, I will kill the locust when I restore. God says, no, I don't kill the locust. Because I wanted the locust that thought it has eaten. Yeah. To see what was eaten when I eat it. Yeah. Because God wants to restore you while the locust is still alive. And my prayer is that those who have spoken negative about you, let them leave. Let them leave to see the final product. Oh, because 
that people look at you in deep. They don't know that people you trust that they should talk to. Because in chapter 4, the Bible says the lady was supposed to take care of Nephew Moshe. When he had the problems, he threw it down. And he is not because of himself, because of people he trusted with his life. And someone sitting said, Bishop, I trusted the wrong people with my heart. And they take it fine, they bring it back broken. But the Bible says he is close to the broken hearted. He to tell you, he will restore. And restoration is not just bringing it in the same quantity. It's God doing it more. The Bible says in John 10 verse 10, the fever does not come with the one to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Abundance means God is going to give you life beyond life. Which means you want to survive when people thought you will die. God has a way of making a prime minister where you were a prisoner because God can elevate you where you were undermined. I pray that God will lift you up where you were despised. And you sing a song that says he lifted me up from the king of the cliff and he planted my feet up on the king's highway. And that is the reason I see. They say restore. How many people say, Lord, restore? What the devil has destroyed, Lord, restore. What the enemy has stolen, God, restore. When they call Samson, wanted to turn an anointed into a container. He was grinding. But while he was grinding, they were not aware that the hair is growing. Let me preach it to somebody here. Somebody say, Lord, do it again. Come to my tent, they say, Lord, do it again. I feel in the spirit the hair is growing again. The power is coming back again. Jonah, we are, we are coming out of the belly. You are coming out of the belly of the They cut the head. They forget the head. As long as Jesus is the head, we are going ahead. Somebody said we are going ahead. Can I inject with the stubborn spirit here? No matter what, I'm going forward. Whether you laugh or you don't laugh, the devil specializes with what if. What if God is not coming through? What if you are not getting it? When we answer, we say, even if. Uh, the Hebrew boy say, even if he is not rescuing us, but it shall be known that 2023, there was another bunch of students who refused to bow to the pressures of Satan. Even if they never had a meal, Somebody say, I refuse to bow. How many people say, Lord, hear me? Because of what they have said. May God raise you because of what they said about your family. Because of what they have said about you, mother. Because of the things the relatives have said. That you will die poor. You will die in the shackle. Because they said you are from a poor background. May God raise you as a story changer. May God raise you as a new dimension. May God put you forward so that your mother will attend graduation. And you will take that honor and put it on top of her. And say, mother, I made it. Mama, mama, I made it. When the devil thought I was going to be a prostitute, I'm now a prostitute. I'm a prostitute. I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. He lifted me up. My grace is sufficient for people, and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Let me say this before I go. The only nation that had walls is Jericho. In all the back 
is of Israel. And you must remember that it was the first battle. When you see wars, you must know you are fighting the first battle. The reason yours is tougher is because you are breaking through for the coming generation. You are introducing a new order in the family. You are canceling ancestral spirits and you are introducing the power of God. And the devil wants to kill you so that he may kill the coming generation. And I hear the Lord say, oh Lord. Somebody say, I will hold on for the sake of the coming generation. If nothing good has ever happened to your family, declare it will start with me. Come on, somebody, if there was never a PhD in that house, it will start with you. If there was never a Bentley in that family, it will start with you. If there was never a machine in that family, it will start with you. And how about the old, how about you? You want to take a look? I saw the beginning of this book of the law shall not depress on you. If you are not saved, you are not born again. Lift up your right hand as a bishop pray with me. Lift up your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, I have your word. My heart believes. My mouth confesses. Jesus is Lord. Save me. Save me. Deliver.